in my recent talk at the joint meeting of ASH and BSH, I essentially reviewed concepts and application of the AI or artificial intelligence nematology. We discussed first a bit about the drivers of uh, artificial intelligence progress and in, in uh, medicine and hematology in particular. And I think we identified four main concepts. One is that we have obviously a lot of data collected now for every patient, whether it's uh, nodes, labs, genomics, pathology, et cetera. And this really drives, you know, there is a need to process and uh, use that data in a way that will dispatch patient care. And AI offers these tools. The second thing is that we have uh, quite an advancement in comp computation power. So now tasks that would take days over days uh, for computation would be performed pretty quick, quickly. The third thing is the algorithmic breakthrough. And I think one field that we identified in particular is deep learning, which is a iteration, essentially more advanced iteration of artificial neural networks. And is used commonly for speech recognition, natural language processing, computer vision, and has a lot of implications in, in medicine. And the fourth element is that the field, a, or if people want to capitalize on the data, there is a lot of investments in the field, and that's probably one of the engines. When we think of the a, AI and hematology, you know, we could broadly categorize it to two main fields that uh, are quite developed at this point. One, it really speaks to diagnostics. We see a lot of applications on in interpreting blood smears, biopsy, uh, radiological features. And in the talk, we gave a few examples, for instance, one uh, paper by Brooke Adel, they published recently at a blood cancer a disease uh, was that uh, we, there is a, they developed a machine learning model based on a deep learning algorithm that could uh, essentially get bone marrow uh, biopsies and uh, according to the input actually identifies the genomic landscape in MDS patients. And there are a lot of other applications for interpretation of uh, blood smears and, and uh, other pathology measures. Uh, the second field that there is a lot of activity with machine learning and AI is for prognostic or treatment personalization. However, I feel that mo most of these models have not yet had a large impact in patient care. When thinking a bit about, you know, what are the challenges we have in the field and, and how can we drive it forward? The main issue is data. So in order to really benefit for, from these AI algorithm or deep learning algorithm, we need a lot of data because these are data hungry uh, algorithms. And, and the problem that was also mentioned in the last meeting is that many data sources are siloed and we don't have good networks of collaboration. So. Now it's not really about technology, it's rather having you know, the stakeholders together and, and trying to find a way to share the data and keep patient privacy. The other uh, challenge we identify is uh, essentially related to the algorithms and technology used. So these are not straightforward to uh, implement. They still require a lot of computational power which is not available you know, on site for many centers or academic centers. So I think that as the infrastructure improves, but also as the algorithms become more efficient, we could probably implement them uh, in an easier way. The third point I think is a challenge is that many AI models are black box models, meaning that we don't understand the rationale behind a certain classification, diagnosis, prediction. And this is even worse, quote unquote, in a deep learning algorithms where they're so complicated, you can't understand, uh, uh, you can't really understand or figure what was driving the prediction. There are some tools 
to analyze the prediction, the drivers or predictions post hoc, but still it's not as we as clinicians are used to have you know, a standard regression model where we actually have a coefficient that we know what its role and how it contributes into a, to prediction. One additional challenge is a, assuring a data or model generalizability. So since we discussed that many of the models that we have in the current age are developed on rather smaller data sets, we don't have good validation sets. And a, you know now as part, for instance, the process of a, a, a making a machine learning algorithm or a base device, a machine learning based device a commercially available, the FDA actually wants to track the a, a validation cohort and make sure that it continues to perform its task in an optimized a, a optimized way, even on external data sets that they won't the model was not trained on. So I think whenever, especially judging, you know, papers on machine learning or application of machine learning, you should also always ask, you know, what is the data that the model was trained on? Are there specific biases in the data? And the second thing is um, whether it was uh, validated uh, externally or not, and how good is our validation set. And um, regarding where and how is it it's going to move forward, in my opinion, the main applications, the current applications of, a, a, of AI is making the routine tasks we perform as physicians more efficient. We see it mainly in pathology and radiology, where I envision, you know, and there are already, it's already available actually, where we'll have tools for decision support that will help us interpret a certain, a, a certain um, scan or a test and improve the accuracy and also the efficacy of the pathologist or radiologist that is, uh, you know, is going over the specific uh, essay or test.